Hey there, I think we've lost a bunch of people out of the room well, so we can have a very intimate fireside chat. I think they needed a coupon to get in they and not everyone a, had they one. They thought they needed a coupon. Right. Yeah. And um, given that this is a fireside chat, we did bring a QR code to drop um, s'mores in your car. But it looks like that went down. Did we lose our s'mores? Because... I, for me, at least, when there's a fire, there has to be some more. Always. 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 And brandy. Yes. Brandy and s'mores. Yes. And here's, and here's Brandy, and we got brandy. s'mores. Brandy, and we have <laughs> s'mores. So, um, all right, well, we'll get started, even though I have this funny feeling we're missing yeah. most of the audience. So, hopefully, they're coming. Yes. Actually, we can wait a, we can wait a minute. Can we wait a minute? Yeah. yeah. Let me go. That's all right. Because right now I'm talking to Jeremy, who and he already is Mark Commerce, and you. We're going to have a one-on-one -on -one with you here. <laughs> I love that. Who, who do we have here? Who, lady in the front on your phone. Who are Sorry, you? I'm rallying the team. No, she was like, we'll just have a one-on-one -on -one chat. One -on -one. <laughs> so I'm Ariel. Um, I'm with Brandon Avers. I manage our um, marketing. And I'm Shannon Rivera. We are the marketing team for Brandon Avers. Sweet. Yes. Very cool. So you said social media, right? Uh, and a long time ago. But he's he's with Brand Innovators. I'm not. Oh, you're the you're the rent a. I, I am the guest MC. Um, a long time. Well, at one point I was a sponsor. No longer. Now I'm a brand. Um, but we built a technology for minting NFTs on the blockchain. White label solution. Beautiful. With wow. utility and experiences all built into one. Oh, I love that. We should talk about that. Um, but I was going to say, in 2012, I launched the first manufacturer coupon platform okay. that was built, SAS, first of all, for the CPGs that I'm worked inside of Facebook. checking who you are so we know how to speak to you. <laughs> we, were, we were on the same wavelength. We were doing coupons and we were doing social. All right. I am definitely waiting a second here. You want us to sing? You go, if you don't mind. Otherwise, I'm going to start singing. If I sing, they will I, not come. When I get a mic in my hand. Are you going to karaoke me? I'm going to karaoke. Please let it be Whitney Houston. And I... <laughs> it's only Whitney. I, I, what? Well, help me with Whitney. I don't even... <laughs> Yeah. That's the only one I had. Whitney Houston used to live across the street from, well, her bodyguards lived across the street from me, and she lived down the street. Uh, that's what I was about to say. Not that bodyguard. There are actual bodyguards. And oh, let me well, just that's tell way you, less there, fun. There's a whole lot of drama happening. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what isn't working? The QR code. The QR code is not working. That's. Maybe it's too small or too big, and <laughs> let me try here. Yeah, we've never. Or it's. Oh, you know what? It has glare and shit. I'm oh, getting. There it is. Yeah, I, 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 you have to get it, right to get it right at the right angle, and then it goes away really fast. But anyway, is this broadcasting? It is broadcasting. Awesome. So all the people who are broadcasting, we can start talking for, to you. Sure. And three, two, one. We're actually going to start. Hi, I'm Jennifer Silverberg. I'm the CEO of Smart Commerce. Thank you all who got roped into coming back here. Woo! Thank you so much. Um, Smart Commerce, for those who don't know, oh, look at that chair. That's, that is a very dangerous thing. Sorry, I'm also a mom, and there's a chair that's broken that somebody's going to break them, hurt themselves. So anyway. See, when y'all get to be our age, you can just do everything just go, at one time. What? We're going to do the marketing thing. We're going to make sure everybody's eating. It's fine. <laughs> so yeah, everyone, everyone here's your some more for, um, for your fireside chat. Um, anyway, make sure um, you're all drinking water for later. Smart. Sm I, I'm going to introduce myself really quickly, and then we're going to be um, turning it over to Brandy for a bit. So, Smart Commerce um, helps bridge, helps CPG brands sell more stuff by turning all of their digital touch points into starting points for e-commerce. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we circle around. Brandy, can you tell us who you are, what you do? Yes, your favorite I'm song. <laughs> sing it. I'm a cancer. Um, <laughs> Answer her. I like walks on the beach. Uh, yeah, I like puppies. 
Um, my name is Brandy Johnson, and I'm the CEO of the Coupon Bureau. Um, and we're actually going to talk about making coupons sexy again. Yes. So yes. Um, the Coupon Bureau is an industry nonprofit that was built to support the new universal coupon format. Um, so that's me. So I want to think about this for a second. Who here realizes that when you go shopping online most of the time, there's not an opportunity for you to put a coupon in for the things that you buy the most? Just like when you walk into a store, you know, you have, the, you have a coupon that you've gotten somewhere. Have you noticed when you go to Walmart Grocery, what are you going to do? You can scan them on your computer. What are you going to do? And so it's a hole that's been sitting there for a while, and the brand and, and there are some solutions that are specific to certain retailers, but the the challenging factor, the thing that hadn't been solved, was the ability to have a single coupon that works across all of the retailers. Which, Brandy, can you talk to us about? First of all, that's one of the problems. There's another problem. Help us understand what problems it is that, that the Coupon Bureau was seeking to solve. Sure. So um, from a couponing standpoint, it's really important for brands to be able to activate those shoppers. Um, and for the last decade, coupons are the number one driver of consumer behavior. It's kind of sad and it's kind of weird um, because if I asked each of you, you may or may not have ever even used a coupon, but especially in the grocery space, it is the number one driver of consumer behavior. Um, when we were, you know, 10 years ago, all having the data debate and they were like, oh, let's, let's not ask people for things. You could ask these women for their blood type and they would give it to you for a 25 cent off coupon. It was magic. It was marketing magic. Um, and so the challenge became, as we've moved more into a digital world, brands didn't have a digital solution for their activations that was retailer agnostic. So yes, you could, you could do loyalty, right? And yes, you could do rebate. And all of those are fantastic. Um, but when it came to a brand actually being able to engage their shoppers omni-channel, and deliver an offer direct to consumer that can be used in any retailer, there was no such thing. So we were actually asked by the industry, I say we, my team, um, I came originally from a coupon provider background. Uh, we launched uh, the first SaaS manufacturer coupon in 2012. And so they knew us as the tech coupon specialist, which is a really bizarre title um, in our industry. And so they said, we need a technical solution. We need to know how to do digital coupons in a retailer agnostic way. And the problem was really simple. There was no little piece of paper to put in the point of sale so that we could have reconciliation, so that that retailer could get paid back from that brand. Very basic. So how do we solve? Um, and so we developed this connected ecosystem where all the retailers are connected in the cloud to a single source of truth, which is the Coupon Bureau. All the stakeholders providers, clearing houses, the brands themselves, all connected now to the Coupon Bureau. So we are an industry nonprofit. I like to joke that we're like the FDIC of coupons. Um, we, I don't, I don't know that that's a great analogy, but it kind of works. Um, and so what our job is, is just to support the new coupon format, which is called 8112. That's our application identifier. I know I'm getting really coupon geeky. Um, and so with this new format, brands, um, one, control their direct and consumer experience. Two, we've completely mitigated fraud. We'll talk about that a little bit. So so that everyone knows um, that this is, you guys need sexier names, by the way, because the old school format was 81, I like Brandy. 8110 and this one's 8112. So I'm kind of like, you know, they need... Anyway, the 8110 format, just so you guys know, is the information about the offer is actually sitting there in the barcode. And anybody who's in this room is smart enough to go decode that and create fraud. You wouldn't do it because, you know, you'll go to jail and all that, but, but you can. And so um, while we're talking about opportunity, we're also talking about mitigating potential disasters for the brand. So... 
you want to talk about? 100%. So we, over the years, have seen brand budgets get pulled back and get pulled back from couponing, and it's because of the risk. There, there was no real-time validation of offers. So literally, this poor little cashier, she was the last line of defense to know whether or not, she became the banker. She became the validator of these offers. Um, and so we didn't have that real-time validation. As Jennifer was mentioning, all of the purchase requirements were baked into the data bar. So fraudsters could just build their own, and they did. And then the final thing was for brands specifically, as you guys are looking to launch a um, new product or maybe a new flavor, and, and you're wanting to really optimize your budget, you don't want it off of an entire family code of products. You just want it off of blueberry, 22 ounce, then there was no way to do that. Um, the information just couldn't be held in, in the barcode. So now, with the new 8112, we're going to make it sexy. 8112 format. Um, we have a couple of different parameters for the barcode structure. So the first of all thing is we removed the purchase requirements from the data bar with the new format, with the new standard. So now we've removed the ability for shoppers, fraudsters, to be able to go in and augment that barcode. The second thing is we've got mandatory serialization of every single coupon now. So from once we eventually sunset the current 8110, format and we move to 8112, then mandatory serialization for every offer. What that gives you as a brand is single use, kill at the till capabilities. So we're managing your budgets, you're not going to have overruns, um, but the other thing that it does for you as a brand is depending on your provider, you now have one-to-one -one attribution for every single one of those coupons. So as we think about digital and omni-channel and all the various places that shoppers are now, because we have that mandatory serialization, we can follow them and see where they're going and see what they're doing and they're, have, just have more visibility than we had before. So I want to talk about, um, and by the way, we are partners on this thing, so it's, um, I'm not really moderating as much as we're having a genuine fireside chat. So, so sorry I'm talking a little bit more than I would be as a moderator. but. Um, what I found so fascinating about this, and the reason that smart commerce got involved, was really there are three paths or three different you know, consumer paths to using a coupon. Right now, there's only one, right? You, you cut, or, or actually, right now, there are two cause, because of what they've been doing. But ideally, there, or historically, there was one. You took a piece of paper and you went into a store and they scanned it and, and you got your coupon redeemed. She's make, her team is making that better already by removing that fraud piece. The second piece that she created is now the ability to store that, um, that coupon digitally so that you can have it on your phone, so that when you walk into a store and you scan that thing and you've bought the right product, they can, in the store, understand that that's the right coupon to use. Smart Commerce understands it, and, and I think everybody in here understands, that the, the way that consumers are discovering products and then buying them now doesn't necessarily end in a store. It ends all over the place. It, it can end in a store. It can end in the store parking lot. It can end in, in online, and it can be delivered to their house. So what we needed to do was remove what I thought was the last friction barrier on this, and that's have a fully digital coupon. So. When we drop products in the cart, which is the thing that we do with brands, we want to be able to drop the offer into the cart along with it. And so, thankfully, the new 8112 um, uh, standard allows us to be able to do that and remove that last barrier of friction. Now, the reason this is important to me, I think, as a marketer, and my background was all in marketing, was that if there's a lot, think about just, if you don't listen to anything else about this one, listen to this one thing. If there's a lot of friction to use a coupon or rebate or whatever, you only get the people who are, I'm going to call them coupon horse. I'm not allowed to say that word probably, but, but people, You're who, in Austin. people who, will, who will change brands to get that 50 cents off. And we all know how valuable they are. They're only valuable once because they're going to go change and they're only as valuable as long as you pay them. When you remove the friction, you get all the rest of us. You get the people who go, oh my God, I really did want to try that product and it's 20 cents off. I'm going to drop it in my cart now with that 20% off. So it's a huge shift. It's a tight, the thing that she, that she and her team have built is huge in terms of fraud. I mean, so billions of dollars, but, but billions of dollars of fraud. But it's also important because now the brands can focus their dollars and their, their promotion on the people that they really want to get, the lifetime value, as you yes. said earlier, consumer, 
rather than the the one that's just going after Subsidy, the latest subsidizing a purchase that was going to happen anyway. Exactly, which is crazy. So, do you want to talk about how it works or anything sure. super sexy blockchainy thing that you do? <laughs> It, you know, you've got. We have to say well, blockchain and metaverse. Well, we said I mean, it. we are at South by, yeah. so we should talk about yeah. something technically sexy. Yeah, it's so, a requirement, and this is you. I, so, um, with the new eighty one twelve format, I, I would just like to say, when you think about it from a marketer's perspective, here's what you're getting: you're getting a digital coupon that can be executed in any channel, any place, um, whether that is direct to consumer email, text message. Um, on a website, on the side of a bus, on a QR code, it doesn't matter. So you're limitless now as to where you can deliver, because you know where your shoppers are. So that would be the first thing. Then the second thing is, when let's talk about really quickly how it works. So we created this connected ecosystem, and it was, it's been a lift. We had to connect every single stakeholder in the industry. The last mile of that has been our connectivity to retailers. The beautiful thing about it, for me, is now these retailers are in the cloud as far as their couponing and validation. So in the future, we don't have to keep going back to them and say, hey, we need this one more thing. We need you to update all your point of sale. We need you to do this thing. Um, so that's been really exciting. But the way that it works is a brand goes and creates a coupon, right? Just like they would today, create your master offer file. Typically, that would happen with your clearinghouse. Now, that's just replicated in the coupon bureau's master offer files. And then from there, you allow a provider to have access to that. So whoever's going to be distributing that offer for you. From that point, the provider, whomever that may be, will engage the shopper. You've got creative out there, wherever, whatever channel that is that you're trying to activate. And when the shopper clicks to activate that offer, that provider is in real time serializing that offer and distributing it to them. Simultaneously dropping that offer in the master offer file, to, it's available for redemption. So it's, it's not a difficult concept. Technically, this is pretty basic technology. I would love to say that we're shooting monkeys to the moon. We're not. This is pretty basic. It's just really robust for grocery because we're a little bit behind. Um, so from that point, the shopper can save that digital offer anywhere. Um, we've got some brand or some uh, partners, providers that have apps so that they can get saved to an app. We've got some that are executing to wallet pass. When we built Bureau, we knew we were already building ourselves a problem because we wanted to be neutral. We didn't want to see shopper data. We didn't want to impact current um, competitive advantages for some of the providers. We don't want to see basket data because if we did, the brand or the retailers would never let us in. They would not participate. Um, we didn't want to move into the clearing business because that's already an existing structure. So we knew that what one thing that we were doing that we were breaking was if you get a coupon from RevTrax provider that's in the industry right now. And they serialize that offer to you, one, two, three, four. And then you go over here to Velasis and you get an offer and they serialize you a six, seven, eight. Bureau doesn't know that one, two, three, four, you equals six, seven, eight, you. And I can't put those two offers together into a bundle. And so we knew we were breaking this and we needed a solve. Um, we met with all of the native wallet providers and said, guys, we need a purpose-built solution for couponing because they need to be visible, they need to be selectable, we need to bundle it all into a single barcode or else these retailers are going to kick us out. Because all we did at that point was create the digital version of the old lady with the expandable file. It just looked like this, flipping my phone, right? So how do we solve? Um, we worked with a lot of people in the industry and we finally realized we were going to have to solve it for the industry. So the Coupon Bureau is launching a basic coupon wallet that we will have in the market for any of the providers that don't have their own apps. Um, all of it's based on verifiable credentials. So we're making sure that we're ha being able to identify that shopper in a pseudonymous environment so that we're not passing that shopper data between the two providers, but we can still identify that shopper through the VC and then bundle all of those offers together into a single barcode. Was that sexy blockchaining? That was, ledger? If you followed it all, it was sexy blockchaining, yes. So where are we with this? I know a little bit of this, but you tell me your part. Where are we? Well, 
I'll tell you, I, I came from a startup environment, so I just thought, we'll build it and they'll come and then the whole world will be connected in six months. It's going to be great. Uh, and that was three years ago. Yeah. But we had to build the barcode and then we had to create all the standards and we had to get those approved through all the various industry trade associations and powers that be. Um, right now, we have, I think, all of the legacy providers connected um, to the Coupon Bureau to be able to create and execute these offers. We've got all the major clearing houses already connected and ready to, to settle these offers. Um, our last mile has been connecting retailers. As you can imagine, I have to connect every retailer in the country, not just grocery, drug, mass, dollar. We also worked with Connexus and Nax to make the standard for C-Store so that for those brands that have C-Store products, it's the same process. Um, and this is where we met, actually. So we're a small team. We're a nonprofit and we needed help. So we started engaging with companies that already touched the retailer point of sale in some way and we call them accelerators and they just step in for the retailer and they're the bridge of connectivity between us and them. They don't charge the retailer, um, they all have their own reasons to want to be there um, and so we're leveraging that right now. So if you're a brand in here, I will tell you that um, the industry has set a content, a national content live date for July of this year. The CPGs have been pushing and they've been saying if we say that we're going to have content out there in this format, the retailers will have to connect and we're starting to see that. And then you can be my connection point for e-com. So right. that now we've got a complete ecosystem, brick and mortar as well as e-com. And just so that everyone understands the gravity of this and the importance of getting the retailer connections on board if you're a retailer who's in this room. When she says we have content coming in July, Procter & Gamble is fully on board and it already has content put in. Kimberly Clark has content. Um, we've had commitments across multi many of our retailers and their suppliers, so agencies and so forth. So this is sitting there. This is yeah, and, and these will be Kellogg's, already Coca -Cola created Coca -Cola offers. Kellogg's. Yeah. These will be in consumers' hands, and they're going to expect to use them in these stores. And yes. so we need to – the stores that move first, by the way, and we're, we're working with a couple that we're enabling now, the ones that move first will, the one, will be the ones that get um, pickup market share. I'll call it unfair advantage. I said that to somebody, and they were like, I don't like unfair. I'm like, <laughs> First mover well, advantage. Well, yeah, first mover it's advantage. It's always unfair to everyone who didn't move this. first. I know, I know. So um, – but what we see is, so, so just for a second, um, a little bit of data that we've learned. So smart commerce in the last 12 months, we've had consumers put, uh, over 60 million consumers put over $2 billion worth of products in carts from brand websites, brand ads, brand social media, and everything else. We make media shoppable, we make pages shoppable. I hate shoppable, because you aren't really shopping, you're really just reacting. You're going, oh my God, I want that, and you're putting it in your cart. But one of the, so we've we've seen a lot of consumers acting in the out in the world, not how they tell us they act, but how they actually act. Here's a data a piece of data you can absolutely write down and keep for the rest of your life. When you stop a consumer between intent and action, you will lose them. You lose every time we ask a consumer a question between the ad that they see that they want and the, and the product landing into a retailer cart, we lose between 80 and 95% of them, every time. So if you ask them two things, like, do you want a coupon with that? And where did you want to buy it? And which slides did you want to buy? That's three things. You're gonna get best case, 20% of 20% of 20% through which, what's that, one, you know, out of a thousand people who started down that path. So, rem if, if we built something, but it added complexity, particularly in CPG, where, you know, I might, I actually, I may do that with an iPad or something. If I had an iPad and they asked me, do you want a you know, $10 coupon or something like that, I might do it. But when you're buying green beans or, or gum or whatever, 100% of the time we lose the people when we ask them to do something on the way to the cart. And so what I love about what you're doing is you're taking that out. And I think moving forward, you even have more thoughts of how do we make this more frictionless? How do we make this so the consumer basically shows up with the coupon? Yes. So talk to me about what's, what do you see way out there? In, oh, now, here we go. Metaverse. <laughs> Internet 3. What, what yeah. 3? I think as we think about the future of coupons um, and just, just shopper promotions, Web3 is important. It's critical for the shoppers so that they're not the commodity anymore. 
They can actually own that data, engage with the brand. The brand can say, we want your data. We want to know who you are. We want to know what flavor you like. Are you willing to give us your email so that we can understand that information and we'll incentivize you with an offer? But there's just a, a very interesting shift, and you all know it. I mean, that's why we're here. There's a very interesting shift happening between who the shopper is in the environment today and the power that they have and the power that they can have in the future that actually ends up not taking anything away from the brand. It develops an even stronger brand affinity and I think bi-directional kind of conversation between the brand and the shopper. Um, and so, yeah, I think in the, in the next few years we'll see that. We'll see that shift. I think that we'll see the shift with NFT and token. I think promotions will look very, very different um, and it's, it's super exciting. I love anything that starts with the consumer. Is, and somebody was talking up here last, yesterday, and they said the consumer is the center of what we do. We start with them. And, and that is where you have, you're going to have to be. That's how consumers are thinking. Then they're going to invite you into their sphere, or they're going to keep you out of their sphere. And you know, I remember Seth Godin, what was it, like 10 years ago, saying we're going to have permission-based marketing. But he had no idea that we were actually going to be able to control what reached us. And in a world where we control what, reach, what reaches us, the brands actually pick up a little, little control they may have lost when they sent consumers to retailers yes. to buy things. And, and that ought, if you're a brand, please, that should excite you. That should be amazing, that here's your opportunity to gain that one-to-one -one connection with your consumer that you don't have right now. So Absolutely. As a marketer, it's thrilling. It's also just that deep dive into what's being used, where, where did that shopper come? They, yes. they clicked on this coupon from media, and then they used it in this type of store. They clicked on this one. They never redeemed it. Why? Yeah. What happened? And so just having those consumer insights to be able to ask better questions, that makes us better marketers. So do we go to questions? You're looking all antsy over there. I was going to say, uh, <laughs> one or two questions. All right. There. Yes, sir. Oh, question. So your books are dead, right? <laughs> yeah. 256 billion coupons issued last year. 256 billion coupons issued last year. Um, and it's, again, still number one consumer driver. I think when we think about coupons, we think about clipping them out somewhere, shoving them in a little file, and they don't look like that anymore. Well, at least that's what we're working towards them not looking like anymore. Um, and so, no, coupons are not dead. They may be dead for some of us, right, because they couldn't get to us digitally, and we were operating in a digital world. So that's the hope. That's the hope with the new format, is that we can revive that, turn it back on for brands so they have that lever again, but also make it secure, make it more um, targeted, and I think it just more ROI for that effort. And, and in asking that question, you're, you're kind of, I want you to go wider and think is promotion dead? Promotion isn't dead. Coupons are impossible right now in certain spaces. And they're needed because otherwise you're having to substitute other forms of promotion. But promotion is always going to be there, particularly for new products or any strong lifetime value product that you want to maintain the connection to that consumer. So, no, I think it's, I think I think this is this is we'll make it sexy again, but I think it'll be a resurgence for consumers as well. Yeah, yeah. There are some providers that have that capability. It's typically, at least from what I understand right now, most of it's just geotagged, geofenced, um, and they're piggybacking typically off of some other location service that's already being run on the phone. But as far as like getting to the IMEI, IMEI level and understanding who that is from the mobile device, I don't know that anybody, I don't know, I, um, I don't want to lie to you. Oh, you know? Can yeah, you we can do that. Oh, yeah, she can. Yeah. <laughs> as a provider, because we know where the consumer is, and so we can make sure that they see the or, the offer that. I, I, why didn't you Why didn't you tell me you could do that? Uh, That's badass. Like, um, 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 yeah. So we're still we're still figuring out what we're going to do here, and what crosses the line, and what doesn't cross the line. We had another question right here. Did you manage to get fewer players like Amazon on board? Did you manage to get fewer players like Amazon on board? Interestingly enough, some of our large CPG partners are having those conversations on our behalf. Um, so yes, um, I'm not going to say which 
large brand. One of the biggest couponers in the United States is having conversations with them right now. Um, and I can't tell you which way that's going to go, but it, it, it would make sense. The other ones that have been really interesting to me are conversations that we're having with two of the largest e-com platforms right now. And it's exciting, but it's also scary to me. It's scary to me when I put my retailer hat on because I'm fighting, I'm fighting to get I'm fighting to get those shoppers in brick and mortar, but it's also super exciting because there's so many shoppers now that are there. So from a brand perspective, amazing. I'll catch them wherever they are. But yes, complete, holistic and the one of the big challenges to say, or I know we've been working with your staff on this, is um, we need, because we are working as one of the adjudicators of the coupons, is understanding what is a third party sa sale. Because the brands don't want to have to pay for uh, the coupons on a third party seller. And so, right. So that's one of the biggest challenges. And now Walmart, of course, as well. So not naming names, but Amazon and Walmart. Yeah, two tricky, tricky situations. You almost held on and didn't give it away until the end. But you... I got it, you know. Well, he asked. He yeah. said Amazon. Well, Brandy and Jennifer, thank you so much. Thank Coupons. you. The